Hi, I'm Ayami, and I'm here with your Daily Dose. Today, I have with me Valentina and Grace, the co-presidents of our new Ethnic Awareness Club. Um, Valentina, would you like to talk about why you started the club? Yeah, so I noticed um, as during my time here in Carmel, which has been around, this is my third year here, and uh, I've noticed that there's a lot of racism um, towards minorities and um, other ethnic groups. Um, specifically from white people, but it can also be um, other races. And I just really felt frustrated that nothing was being done about it um, as it should be. Um, so I really, I pulled, you know, some staff members and who I, you know, felt close to and who I could trust. And, um, and I talked to people like Grace and Ayami. And from there, like, we kind of... Um, started meeting together and kind of having ideas on what we can do. And one of those ideas was to start a club. So, yeah. Um, when Valentina asked me to join a club that they were kind of like workshopping and trying to start, I was like, yeah, this is a great thing because I've been in this district since kindergarten. So I've kind of grown up in this like very small culture bubble. And I didn't realize a lot of the things that people were saying towards me were racist until I became more like socially aware and politically aware. And recently I've kind of seen an influx in that. Maybe it's just because I'm being more cognizant about what's happening. But yeah, I just wanted to join the club to maybe make some kind of change. I know that for me, I joined the club because I moved here in fifth grade. So I haven't been here since I was little, you know, in kindergarten, like you have grace, but when I joined initially, I was met with a lot of stereotypes being forced on to me, especially because I'm half Japanese, like, oh, you're smart because you're Japanese, or you're not that smart for someone who's Asian, kind of a weird mix between those. And that paired with me being, you know, Black and Mexican, it kind of, as I got older in this district, it just grew. And I don't know if it's because I'm more aware of it or because it's happening more but i've noticed it's mostly microaggressions like stereotypes jokes racial jo the jokes about my race or just other countries that even like don't even pertain to me i know that there's a lot of slurs being thrown around like grace you've heard the c slur which is directed towards east asians mm -hmm. um and you know you've gotten jokes about like corona because yeah. you're chinese yeah, um, freshman year when it was actually happening, I'm a junior now, but uh, there were certain people who would start to exclusively address to me as like, oh, Corona or like bat eater, that kind of thing. Um, it wasn't funny. And I do remember kind of like laughing it off. And I think a lot of it is within those like microaggressions where you can't really do anything about it at the moment. Uh, even if you knew it was wrong. But I think that microaggressions are like the biggest thing in CHS culture. Yeah, I agree. I think stereotypes like are just very normalized. Like people don't really think about like the harm um, that comes from it. And like, I mean, I mean, I had like stereotypes on like my parents even on like, mm -hmm. oh, like my mom, you know, people would say, no, you, she doesn't speak Spanish or she doesn't speak English. Like, uh, she probably only speaks Spanish, so we can't really communicate with her. Kind of like dehumanizing my mom. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just very like odd because I had never like experienced that really until I moved here. Um, because everywhere else I had lived, it's kind of more diverse. And there was still racism, but it wasn't as like prominent, unlike here. I know that in... I, as far as I've talked to you and Liza, who's also an officer in the Ethnic Awareness Club, you've talked about being hypersexualized as a Latina, and I've experienced that as well. But from like my experience, I've noticed that guys in particular will talk about my body and my weight, my chest, my like my butt, and it's 
like they don't see me as equal to someone who's not like a person of color right yeah same thing like i think guys would say things especially in uh, freshman year they would say like very sexual things towards me to a point where it was like sexual harassment and they would like excuse it because they're like oh well you're hispanic you know you kind of just have those features so it's like it felt very like uncomforting and also i was highly associated with like drugs mm -hmm. only because i'm colombian and you know it's automatically like oh like you know cocaine is from colombia so you must have some kind of family that's like affiliated with you know the drug cartels and it was like very uncomfortable because like i don't want to be associated with that nobody does really yeah. so it's like and i'm much more than that like you know it's just it's very it hurt my self-esteem and i feel like that happens a lot yeah. with people of color it just like unconsciously and even consciously like just damages the self-esteem it kind of feels like you're forced into a box and if you don't fit into that box then you're socially unacceptable because white people or just racist people in general have this idea of what is acceptable of a minority to be speaking from my experience uh i not sexualized in that way i'm chinese american right so there's a lot of oh you must be smart which you re uh, touched upon and it does somewhat put like a kind of pressure to perform well and it also perpetuates the model minority myth which actively pushes down other uh people of color uh and I don't know. I feel like the culture at CHS kind of perpetuates the stereotypes that already exist. And it's just like a really small bubble. And I think that bubble is really sad because talking to like people of color and a, a good portion of them who also tend to be racist to other uh, races and ethnic groups, they excuse it because they're like, oh, well, I don't even know. I've been, you know, people have been so racist to me that I don't even know what's racist anymore and i'm like mm -hmm. that to me was just so sad but like because as a person of color you've experienced that hate you've experienced that emotion yet you like chose to you know put it onto other people and i don't know like that was like also like something that like awoke and awoke in me and i was like that has to stop like it cannot continue i feel like i've had that conversation many times where someone will make a racist joke, I'll comment on it, and another person of color will say, well, he was just joking. She was just mm -hmm. making like light of a stereotype. It wasn't directed at you, but it's really sad. Like, it's really sad to see and hear, and not it's not disappointing, but it kind of makes me feel like- Disheartened? I, yeah, disheartened. Like, I want to educate them and tell them why it's wrong, but you can't you can't fix ignorance if someone doesn't want to listen. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you guys were talking about being like incredulous about someone just like a person of color kind of excusing it and kind of making light of it. And for some time, I was that person who was just kind of like laughing it off and not really thinking about it or not wanting to think about it. Maybe that's because I've like been here the entire time. I just, I don't know, something changed in me and I was like, oh, this is actually wrong. And it's not just a joke because it has implications that maybe the person who's saying it doesn't even think of, but it does kind of instill some kind of like negativity in the person's mind. And then also it enforces stereotypes about certain groups of people that are untrue and not nuanced and very harmful. Yeah. And going off on that, like, I don't think people understand the mental health issues that it can cause. And like, it's very, it's very serious. And I don't think people really understand that mm -hmm. you can put somebody in a really dangerous position by inflicting that on them. Yeah. So with the club, we would want to sort of uh, talk about that and actually be candid about our own experiences and then invite people uh, people of color who would want to join the club to be candid about their own experiences and then just have a place to facilitate conversation about that kind of thing. With our club, we hope to make uh, the campus itself a more positive place and to make the community as a whole a more positive place.
Yeah, and Valet, you and Grace are planning to make events and hold m more discussions. You, ha We had one last week, so we're planning to have more discussions where we can talk about what we want to do and what students want us to do to make the, pos like, the campus a more positive place. Yeah, and we're going to continue hosting more events and um, during like the club meetings, we're going to have more like different types of a variety of different um, things and ideas where we can kind of branch off of. I think that our topics for each club meeting are going to change. So recently we've been doing meetings where we're just discussing individual cultures and kind of diving into that um, for this next semester. We're starting to actually talk more about why we started the club initially. So that's going to be directly addressing a lot of the implicit racism at CHS and talking about um, who needs to be held accountable and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that having that productive conversation works towards making everyone feel safer. Yeah. I wanted to thank you guys for making the club and for Lily to being someone who was interested in the club and then became one of our treasurers along with Liza and just showing that our club has a lot of diversity and it's a great thing to show students that those people that care and people that are planning to make them feel safer and more comfortable and feel represented if they don't already. So I wanted to thank you guys for coming on to here and talking about that. Of course. If you're interested in joining the club or want more information, you can follow us at Ethnic Awareness on Instagram. EthnicAwarenessCHS.com is our website. Our Twitter is CHS underscore aware. Thank you everyone for listening and for joining us and talking about such a heavy topic and just being open-minded. Uh -huh.